if I read what Chris Mason and the team at Blizzard is trying to do correctly, and I'm not suggesting that I am, but I think uh, if you look at Dragonflight, and if we assume, so I'm going to ask you guys to, to make an assumption here, if we assume that the, the latter half of Dragonflight was heavily influenced by Chris Mason, uh, I'll give you guys a couple of examples of why I think there were some real rewrites in Dragonflight. Uh, Vernoth. Vernoth claims five minutes beforehand she will never work with the Aspects. The Aspects are absolute dog shit for all the evil things they did to the children. And even when Alex Straza tells Vernoth, hey, Iridacron is fucking cuckoo, he's making all sorts of deals with all sorts of evil, evil people. Vernoth's like, this is war. Okay, bitch. We don't care, right? And she does the whole fucking, you know, sassy thing and she leaves. She, she wants nothing to do with the aspects. Then, five minutes later, she's like, ah, never mind. I actually do want to be friends with you guys. Could you could you let me into your club? And the aspects are like, yeah, sure. Let's let you into the club. That story doesn't make sense on any level, except when you consider rewrites. Because Chris Metzen wanted Veronoth. I think the original idea was that Veronoth would die with the other, uh, with the other uh, incarnates in the final raid, or at least she would be an incarnate that, that holds over to the next expansion. Once Chris Mason came on board, because remember, the timeline year would also fit. Chris Mason, Chris Mason would have had nothing to do with the actual lore of Dragonflight, at least for the first year. Because Chris Mason only came on board just after the start of Dragonflight. And originally, Chris Mason only came on board as a consultant. Then, as he consults, Blizzard realized, shit, we need this guy, he's really good. And they offer him the job as the lead creative director for Warcraft. Not just World of Warcraft, but Warcraft as a whole. Chris Mason accepts. Now we start seeing, a year into Dragonflight, we start seeing these weird moves that doesn't really fit with the lore. It does kind of, but it doesn't fully. Some things contradict each other. That is almost always a clear sign of some kind of rewrite that happened. And I think it was because Chris Mason had different ideas. He didn't like what Denuser was doing. He didn't like the way the story was going. And he thought that he could do much better if certain things were true. So he basically told uh, uh, Steve Denuser, hey, do your thing. Keep telling your stories. But I need the following characters alive at the end of this expansion. And I need them in this state. Because it's going to be important for the next leg of our story. Denuser then had to make massive rewrites in order to get that out. And ultimately, that's what they did. If you look at the end of Dragonflight, what is the what is Dragonflight going to be known for? It is the replacement expansion. Pretty much all of the heroes that we used to have has been replaced by younger, uh, either children or younger rulers. And the older ones have taken a step back. I think the reason for this is Chris Mason is once again crafting the future of World of Warcraft. For a long time, we have said, World of Warcraft needs a couple of things. It needs new heroes. We're running out of really powerful heroes to really rally behind. We don't have enough of those. And Blizzard, for a long time, didn't seem interested in creating new heroes. They just kept regurgitating the same heroes over and over again. And while there's nothing wrong with that, you eventually run into problems like you did with Sylvanas, where the player base has just seen enough of Sylvanas. They don't want another expansion, with Sylvanas being the main antagonist, protagonist, slash, slash, slash right? They want something new. Chris Mason knows this. The other problem that, that World of Warcraft has had for actually much longer is the lack of real protagonists. Th there's no real or antagonists in World of Warcraft. The only real antagonist World of Warcraft has ever had is Sargeras and the old gods to some extent, but also the old gods are only every once in a while given some spotlight and then they go away. Sargeras is sort of the hand behind everything, oh, but not you. enough that you can call him enough for the game to thrive on. And then, uh, especially since Legion, every single antagonist that World of Warcraft has had basically just disappears into oblivion at the end of every expansion. They bring an antagonist, we kill the antagonist at the end of the expansion. That's fine, but the problem is, where are the mainstays? Where are the things that's driving fear and chaos over the course of multiple expansions. If you look at Dragonflight, it has provided that in the form of Eridacron. Eridacron is already 
the first multi-expansion bad guy that we've had in quite some time. And he's a pretty interesting one at that. And Blizzard is also handling Eurekron just absolutely chef's kiss. They're giving him just enough screen time for us to know that he's probably behind a lot of the shit that we're dealing with, but not so much that we really know his plans or that we can get at all tired with him, right? Or, or sort of burnt out on Eurekron. I think at this point, everyone is very, very interested in Eurekron. Then you look at Sayed and Athreus, another character that was put on the back burner but again, a chef's kiss character that can very easily slot into that big bad over the course of multiple expansions. You have Sir Garrus that's still waiting in the wings. He can still come back as a real big bad. Just we're going to need some story around him. So when you look at the chase moves that Chris Mason is pulling for The War Within, it really does appear like Chris Mason is setting up his next leg of the universe. The last 20 years had its heroes had its champions, and we all fell in love with them. But now for the next 20 years, he needs more. And it, what's interesting to me is that none of the heroes uh, have been killed off. It's more that they've put the heroes on the back burner, but they're still ready to come back. Right, Malfurion, uh, he's still there. He's just not at the moment really part of any story, right? Uh, you take uh, Gain Greymane. He's still there, but just at the moment, he's not the king of Gilneas. Uh, so they have their heroes. The heroes are still there, the old ones that we really enjoyed. So when needed, they can be pulled upon in order to set up new future stories, because you are going to need that, especially when you're dealing with brand new characters. It's always good to introduce new characters alongside old loved ones. Just because you need the audience to have an emotional connection with a character and the older character provides that emotional connection and then you hope that through the older character will form an emotional connection with the new character depending on that relationship. And if you do it right, you can really introduce a bunch of new characters and people will love them. This is sort of uh, one of the mistakes that Blizzard made with Princess Talanji. With Princess Talanji, they introduced her alongside her father, King Rastakhan. And there's nothing wrong. Rastakhan was pretty cool. Princess Talanji was pretty cool. But neither of those characters were characters that any of us knew or even cared about enough to say that we have an emotional connection with them. Princess Talanji, arguably a, a, an awesome character and a character that could have a super cool story in World of Warcraft. The issue is she's had no time to cook and there's also no real emotional connection to the character. So Blizzard will have to figure that out. I'm not entirely sure how they're going to do it. They did it pretty well with um, uh, Lothamar's Bay now. The, the Lothamar's little squeeze. What's her name? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, the Queen of the Night Hall, uh, of the uh, of the, the Nightborn. Um, uh, first, first, first Arcane is Thalysra. Thalysra. That's the one. Yes. Uh, with Thalysra, they did it super cool because they used Lothamar. Um, because we like Lothamar. They knew that through Lothamar, they could get her uh, to be a character that we actually cared about. I am super excited for The War Within, because if I am correct, and I'm looking at all of these boards, uh, all of these pieces on the chessboard, it all appears to point to a really cool future for the story of World of Warcraft, with a bunch of new characters, also for the first time ever, because remember, original World of Warcraft only launched with one real antagonist, uh, two if you include the old gods, but again, the old gods are sort of hit and miss. But it was only really Sargeras that drove the original uh, Warcraft universe. He was the big bad, and everything sort of revolved around him as the big bad. And then came the old gods. The old gods were there, but very much in the, in the background. Now, you have so many more bad guys to pull from, and hopefully the next expansion introduces more. Zalatath can, can very easily become a, a real big threat on the stage, right? And, and become one of those multi-expansion threats that, again, just gives you so much more freedom in how you want to tell the story because you can literally have a, an expansion or maybe two or three expansions deal with the Nathrius, right? And then you leave the Nathrius for the next 12 years. You don't really touch the Nathrius. And you can do a story about Sargeras. And then you can do a story about... Uh, Zalatath, and then you can do a story about Yurl. She's another antagonist that could very, very quickly start featuring in World of Warcraft. Then you do a story about Yurl, and so you have enough stories to sort of keep the the train going forever and ever and ever. 
dude, you can't not be excited. But you can't, you can't not be excited. 